Today's lesson is still in Unit 3, Waves. Uh, today we're working on Day 3, which is Harmonics. For odd periods, this is due on Wednesday, March 26th. Uh, even periods, this is due on Thursday, March 27th. So there, there are a couple terms that we need to learn today. The first one that we need to learn is what is called a natural frequency. Uh, so you're going to learn that any object that vibrates will end up creating a sound. So remember the definition of sound, wave is something that, um, a material that is vibrating. And the frequency, so how fast it's vibrating, um, that they vibrate at when they are hit, struck, plumbed, plucked, strummed, etc., um, is going to be the natural frequency. So the frequency that most objects will want to uh, vibrate at. And this generally depends on two things, um, the material as well as the length of the material. And we'll see what that means in a little bit. Another term you should also be familiar with is what is called a forced vibration. And again, like I said, most objects have a natural frequency. However, when something else, for example here, when this person, sorry I'll use a different color, when this person puts in that same natural frequency, what ends up happening is it causes the object, in this case the cup or the glass, um, to begin vibrating as well. So if you put in the natural frequency, that the object usually has, that will cause this to vibrate, that cup. Um, so if you want to go ahead, you can go ahead and YouTube this video, it's pretty cool. But if you sing at a certain um, frequency, you can actually um, end up breaking this cup because it is vibrating at its frequency. So most instruments will create um, pretty nice sounds, and those sounds are produced through what are called standing waves. So we're going to go into our topic of harmonics right now. And what a standing wave is, it's when a wave is spinning in a constant position. So you can kind of see over here that um, this is pretending that it's actually spinning. So you should imagine that um, this is kind of spinning, a sorry, a strand spinning in a circle. Um, so it's coming out towards you and then going down, going to the back, and then coming back up and towards you. Um, and what happens is that these waves actually continue to spin in the exact same position. And these are what are called um, harmonics, so they occur at specific frequencies. So we can kind of see that there are a number of different ones right here, um, and we'll learn about what those different ones are in the next slide. But really quickly, what you need to see is that um, the nodes, there's a couple of vocab words here, nodes are the point in which they're standing still. So you can imagine if this is kind of spinning around and around and around um, into the page, that this part right here will be standing still, this part right here, and this part right here. So these three parts are going to be called the nodes. Whereas you can see here that this part of the um, the string will continue going up and down, so you can see it's spinning in a circle going up and down, same with this part over here. So these parts are actually called the anti-nodes, um, and those are the ones that move up and down. But overall, since it's moving so quickly, it creates the same kind of image, so it kind of looks, you can see it will kind of look like this kind of wave, um, or this kind of wave. So depending on how fast you're actually creating, um, making that string go, it's going to change what the actual wave looks like. Um, and these different levels are what are called the harmonics. So um, there are several harmonics, but we're only going to talk about the first, second, third, and fourth harmonics. So we can see here, this is the first harmonic, this is the second one, this is the third one, and this is the fourth one. And they kind of work based off an equation. So if you look at the, if you imagine that we have an X harmonic, um, which means just any number of kind of waves going on, um, then this is how it's going to work. Uh, the X harmonic, the number of waves that it creates, is X divided by 2. Oops, sorry, let me make that a little bit thinner so you can see it. Um, so it's going to be, hold on, X divided by 2. Um, the number of nodes that it will have will be 1 plus this X. So here's my X, 1 plus the X. The number of anti-nodes is exactly the same as X. And the wavelength of it is going to be 2 divided by x times the length of the um, entire, kind of, let's imagine, the entire string. Um, so right there. Um, so for the first harmonic right here, we're going to go through this equation and prove that this equation is correct. So the first harmonic, uh, you can see, is designated when we have um, half a wave. 
So remember what a wave looks like? It actually has that up and down part. And in this case, we only kind of have the first part. We only have this first part. So this is going to be half a wave. That's how we see x divided by 1, or sorry, x divided by 2. So 1 divided by 2 will give us half a wave. Um, if we look over here, we can count them out. We have one node here where it's staying still, one here. So in total, we'll have two nodes. Um, I could calculate that. So 1, so x right here, plus this 1 will end up giving me two nodes. Uh, antinodes is exactly the same thing as whatever x is. So since x is 1, I'll have one antinode. And we can see here that we only have one part of this um, harmonic moving up and down. And lastly, if we were to imagine that this had a length of, let's say, 3 meters, um, then the, sorry, if we had a length of a yarn or string that equals 3 meters, then we would be able to see that the wavelength of the actual harmonic would end up being 2 times 3. So in total, the total wavelength would end up being 6 meters. So then remember, this is our symbol for wavelength. Wavelength would equal 6 meters. Because remember, only this is half of a wavelength, so you'd have to double it to find the real wavelength. Um, we can do the same sort of analysis with number two. Um, for the second harmonic, which we can see right here, second harmonic, uh, we would calculate it, the number of waves is two divided by two, um, which equals one. So we can see here that we have one whole, so this is one, one wave looks like, so this has one whole wave, therefore its number of waves should equal one. Uh, number of nodes, 1 plus 2, that x equals 2, 1 plus 2 would give me 3. So I can see 1 node, 2 nodes, 3 nodes. Um, the number of antinodes is just x. If x is 2, then therefore the antinodes should be 2, and we can see that. This part moves up and down, this part moves up and down, so that's 2. And its wavelength, again, imagining that the length of the string is 3 meters, then that would be over here. Wavelength would equal 2 divided by 2. So x equals 2, so it's 2 divided by 2 times the length. Um, and 2 divided by 2 equals 1, so times 3. Our wavelength would end up equaling 3 meters, um, which makes sense because this in and of itself is one wave. So however long this is, is actually the length of the wavelength. Um, and you can go ahead and work out those analyses on um, the third harmonic and the fourth harmonic on your own. All right, that's it for today. Make sure that you know what a natural frequency is, what a forced vibration is, and then what all the different harmonics are and how the antinodes, nodes, and wavelengths relate. See you later.